Okay, so last time uh, we were talking about um, average length versus entropy. We showed that um, there is a small penalty over entropy for any prefix code, which is exactly one bit. Um, we saw that, so in other words, uh, the entropy is as good as you can do with a prefix code. We showed that two classes ago. So uh, by as good as you can do, I mean that's the smallest that's a lower bound of the average length of the code. We also showed that uh, there exists a prefix code <coughs> with length entropy plus one bit. So in other words, your penalty, uh, your, your, the largest penalty you can possibly have for using a prefix code is one bit. Um, we showed that um, this was actually a problem for binary sources because generally you can encode a binary source with one bit um, even if, uh, even ignorantly, you could just assign uh, one element of the source of zero and the other element of the source of a one, not compress at all, and achieve one bit. Uh, but we showed that there was a strategy, uh, so I mean this one bit penalty uh, is obviously minor if the entropy is large, so the strategy was to um, extend the source, in other words, bind a number of source letters together into a larger, uh, a larger element, and then this one bit penalty per source letter is relatively less important. We ended off last time by proving Macmillan's theorem, which said that uh, even if you abandon prefix codes, you can't do better than entropy. So it turned, uh, it turned out that um, prefix codes, where this came from, this came from Kraft's inequality. So um, we showed that as a result of Kraft's inequality, uh, which all prefix codes must satisfy, average length was lower bounded by entropy. We showed in Macmillan's theorem that all um, uniquely decodable codes also must satisfy Kraft's inequality. Um, and so therefore, uh, entropy is as good as you can do with either prefix or uh, any uniquely decodable code. So since there doesn't seem to be any significant penalty for using prefix codes, uh, why not use them? So today we are actually going to look at our first real coding scheme. <coughs> we are going to talk about the Huffman procedure for Huffman codes. So um, a Huffman code is the optimal prefix code for a given uh, probability distribution function. So if I give you source letters, if I give you a random variable x over a certain alphabet and I give you the probabilities, uh, the Huffman code, you can obtain a Huffman code using a procedure that I'm about to give you, and that, it turns out, is the optimal prefix code. Um, furthermore, because it's the optimal prefix code, um, remember last time we said that if, um, if the probability, uh, if the values of the probability were equal to inverse powers of two, it turned out that a prefix code could achieve entropy. Uh, such a probability density function has a special term called dyadic. So dyadic, that means uh, p of x uh, is equal to 1 over 2 to the n. Uh, for each x, there's some n such that uh, each probability is 1 over 2 to the n. If p of x is dyadic, then the associated Huffman code Um, 
I used the following source uh, last time. This is a, a simplest non-trivial non-binary source that I can think of. So let's say uh, x, the random variable, takes values in a, b, c. Um, let's say the probability of a is one half. Probability b equals probability c equals one quarter. So this is a dyadic distribution. Dyadic because the probability of A is 1 over 2 to the 1, and the probability of B and C are both 1 over 2 to the 2. So all the probabilities are inverse powers of 2. So um, the Huffman code here should achieve entropy. So uh, firstly, let's calculate what entropy is. H of x is equal to 1 half log 2 of 1 over 1 half plus 1 quarter log 2 1 over 1 quarter plus 1 quarter log 2 1 over 1 quarter log, uh, this is log 2 with log 2 quantity, so this is 1 half plus with log 4 2, so that's uh, 2 over 4 which is 1 half um, same. and that's the same total here is 3 over 4, excuse me, 3 over 2. All right, the Hoffman procedure. What we do is we uh, firstly sort the, uh, source, the source letters in decreasing order of probability. Conveniently, they're already sorted in that order. So. Uh, Probability of A is one half, that's the highest probability, and probability B, probability C, both have lower probability. So uh, let's write those down here. So A, B, C. In decreasing order of probability, let me also write down their probabilities beside them. Using the Huffman procedure, what we do is we group together the two least probable elements. So that's B and C in this, in this case. What we will do is we will then form a, a sort of a grouped symbol, BC. The grouped symbol BC has probability one quarter plus one quarter, which is one half. What we will also do is we will assign, um, so my output alphabet is binary. And I will assign a 0 to one of these elements and a 1 to the other. Doesn't matter in which order I do that. Okay, then we do the same thing. Now these are already, these are already sorted in decreasing order of probability because uh, they're both the same probability, so it doesn't really matter in what order I put them. I group these together. letter A, B, C with probability 1. I assign this one a 0 and this one a 1. Like so. And at the end, once I have a single group source letter left, I'm done. To get my Huffman code, what I do is I trace back from here I trace back to each source letter, and I pick up the binary digits on each leaf uh, as I do so. So to get A's source code, I start here, and I traverse to there, and I pick up a zero along the way. So A, the code word for A is zero. For B, starting here, I go through BC. So B is here, B is here, so I pick up a one. And then I end up here, and I pick up a zero. And C, what's the code word for C? It's one, one. So I start here, I go through here, there's C, I pick up a one. I go through here, there's C, I pick up another one. 